rock and roll people from Hard Rock Hell. This is the annual Rebel Rocker Get Your Rock Off interview. And this year, we have the pleasure of doing it with John Fred Young from Blackstone Cherry. Welcome. That's me. Thank you. So, you guys have been extremely busy for about the last nine months, haven't you? Yes, we have. Uh, we started uh, touring in April of this year and uh, actually ended up... Uh, Getting out with the Alter Bridge guys in May, and we were, you know, we did uh, we did a whole tour with them for about a month and a half, and then we came over uh, this summer to do the festival. So that was that was a good lick, and then uh, we had I think just a couple weeks off, and and uh, did some headline stuff in the states, and then uh, came over. Uh, well, actually, we did a tour in the states called the Carnival of Madness. Yeah, and. Um, now we're, you know, we came over in October to um, open for Alter Bridge in Europe and the UK, and uh, we just ended that at Wembley, and now we're uh, we're here. We're here. So uh, it's been what seven months since the album came out? I think so. Yeah, yeah, seven months. Uh, I wouldn't say a change from what you guys have done previously, but it's a nice upgrade to what you've previously done. Awesome. Um, so my first question has got to be. One of my favorite all-time Southern rock songs is on there. Who chose it and why? Can't You See? We started playing Can't You See, just uh, goofing off, you know, just playing it as a cover um, live. And then, uh, you know, we, we started realizing that, uh, actually, I think we started doing it in Ireland. And I think we, we continued to do it at some of our headline shows. And it just kind of stuck in the set. So when we, when we did the album, um, we had demoed it at our, our buddy's house, uh, Jonesy. And we sent that to the label along with like the rest of the, you know, 100 songs we sent to our label. And they wanted us to really take a serious uh, attempt at recording it. So when we did our record last year in November, we, we did record it. and. Uh, it was. Uh, it, it came out, you know, really good. I, I think it came out kind of unique too, and not not exactly like the original. Oh, version, I, do, you know? I do. I do like you guys' version of it. I, I was kind of shocked. Uh, how do, how were the Southern Rock fans taking it? I, I think they like it. I think they really do. They yeah. Just come turned around and said, "How could you mess with another classic?" Yeah. How could you mess that song? Up? Well, I think you always get scared when you do uh, yeah. a song that has definitely been a staple for years and years. You don't want to, you know, do something that would, you know, definitely make a a weak version of the song or or to um, you know take any of the the original you know um, parts out I mean I I don't know I, I think we we did it very tastefully though yeah, you guys did a great job I, I I do love the track awesome thank you now Emma you got any questions yeah, you guys um, are celebrating now your 10th anniversary we did. of actually Blackstone Cherry. How did you celebrate it? What did you do to, to actually bring that to, to the head? We were home. Uh, actually, we, we turned 10 years old uh, June the 4th of this year. So we were home, and uh, Chris's fiance, his sister's husband, uh, I know that's a long lineage there, but... Um, <laughs> We went up to his house and we had a, a cookout and it was it was a really fun day. So um, we had a cake and it was good. It was good times. I mean, to be in a band for ten years together, you know, um, it's it's amazing. Truly, I mean, some marriages don't even last that long, you know. Very true. But you guys have all stayed true. You've all stayed in the band. Uh, how, how are your relationships now to what they were when you first started? I think we, you know, obviously we're we're growing as people and I think that you know as we become you know maturing young men I think that we definitely have different ideas about things as we get older but I think we still have the same love and and uh, friendship as we did and brotherhood when we first started uh, everybody's kind of the same person they were when we started excuse me started it's just that I think we're we might be growing better facial hair now I think that's <laughs> true goatee now and he doesn't look like Leif Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> Is facial hair quite an important thing in a band? I think well I mean if I didn't have a double chin and actually I have like no like this this without a goatee I I'm just not a handsome gentleman 
Um, I beg to differ. Well, thank you. Uh, no, actually, I think it does make you obviously look younger without facial hair, but I think that I just do it because I want to look tough. So. Um, Gino, can you compare that? What? You, you have the facial hair also. Is there any reason as to why you do it? Hey, I've had it for 40 years. Well, no, not quite 40. I, mean, I was six years old when <laughs> he I He was six my... years old when he started growing his great... Uh, uh, no, no, I was an early bloomer with the hair. So, yeah, no, uh, no, it's just a part of me. I, I, I like grow, having it. I want to grow like a white herb, but I can't. I, I tried. My, it, mine just turns around and goes around the lips, and then it just falls. So... Yeah. yeah, I could do. I could do like the Chinese master one. Ooh, oh, yeah, ooh, yeah, yeah. down and just turn around and just let these go. We did no shave November, and uh, yeah. I had the worst. I have just this, this trashy. It's just like under. I don't even know what it is. It's not even a beard. It's not even classified as a beard. But you know, they have these these contests. I don't know where they're at. Um, these these beard competitions, yeah. the, like the World Beard Cup or something like that. <laughs> and um, we have a buddy back home, Shep, that. Um, uh, he's uh, amazing, amazing, big-hearted guy, and a great friend of ours. And he can grow a beard so well. And we're we need to enter him in that. Like I wish I had beard growing skills like that, where I could just literally just you know wake up the next morning, shave, and then have like a five o'clock you know lumberjack. <laughs> But, but you know what we were talking about earlier about your mom being a beautician. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we need to talk to her about things like that. Well, she, you know, Oops. I dropped my recorder. <laughs> she actually, I think she prefers facial hair too. My dad's always like, yeah, you need to cut that off because you need to look young. And I'm like, no, I'm like, it, I look like a shaved <laughs> ape with uh, with no facial hair. So I'm gonna have a goatee. Oh, bless! No, keep it. It definitely suits you. So Thank you. Let, let's get back to the music. So All right, you guys yeah, yeah. Brought their album out seven months ago now. Does 2012 actually hold anything new in regards to music-wise for you guys at the moment? I mean, I think that you know, definitely, we're going home for the holidays. Then we're going to start touring um, in January, maybe the end of January. We're probably gonna do uh, headline shows. Um, you know, we. We have offers come in, and, and you know, it's it's just kind of up in the air at this moment. So I'm, I'm sure, well, obviously, I, I we'll be back out. The, the big one that, that I'm looking forward to is the uh, March tour. Oh, yeah. With, I was going to say with you you guys and Rival Sons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I was going to say, that's going to be a good tour. Two high, young, energy rock bands that just get out there and kick ass. Yeah. Any surprises for us tonight? Um, surprises. You know, I don't, I think we'll probably be doing our set we've, we've been doing, but I mean, Chris gets on these kicks where he'll play, he'll start a cover song that nobody's ever heard of and, and, and you know, we haven't rehearsed the sound check. So I'm sure something like that'll come up or we'll go into a 20 minute jam that makes no sense. Uh, you know, I'm I personally, I'm the guy that likes to play I, I do love covers, don't get me wrong, but I had rather play songs that we haven't played in a long time, yeah. our songs, just because I feel like fans want to hear that stuff. Like I, you know, if I went to see a, my one of like my favorite bands, I would want to hear stuff that maybe necessarily wasn't a single or stuff that you know had, had been played a lot. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah and I, I think that's a good thing. Like if you want to listen to the album or, or you want to hear album songs, you can you can hear them all the time, but. I think a lot of bands concentrate so much on their singles and so much of their their you know their obvious radio releases, and that's that's very important because that's what you know is the band is being portrayed as for their singles. But I think there's a lot of great album tracks that bands don't get to necessarily play because they're they're trying to you know play their singles and they're they're more familiar songs. So um, yeah, I'm I'm more into like doing our catalog, but. You know, a good cover is necessary every once in a while. Of course, yeah. yeah. It, it brings a little bit of diversity and it, it, keeps, yeah. it keeps the fans fresh. It keeps everything fresh. Right, right. Fantastic. What else have we got, Gina? What else have we got? Now we got a good one. <laughs> okay. Christmas turkey, stuffed or not? You can't eat turkey without it being stuffed. Yep. You got to stuff a turkey. Uh, I know a lot of people um, take a beer and they take a the turkey. You know, hot, you know, obviously empty turkey, and they have these beer cookers where you can actually you, you pop you you know pop a can of beer, put it in the stove, you put the, the turkey on top of it, and the flavor from the beer it comes up through the meat. Yeah, it's kind of like the same process as cooking with you know like when they say like some whiskey flavor or something like that. Yeah. We we've never done it. I'd like to try it. Yeah, 
I'd probably burn the house down. But <laughs> you wouldn't class yourself as a, a cooking mom, though. I, I am. I do love to cook. I love to cook. Uh, my grandmother is the world's best cook, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of her cooking. I, I do like. Uh, I'm as soon as I get my kitchen done in my house, I'm gonna start cooking all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Favorite, all the time. favorite food then? I'm a breakfast guy. I love eggs, bacon, ham, sausage, stuff like that. Um, and also, like, different, you know, seafood. I like uh, Mexican food, Chinese food. It's, it's, hard, it's hard for me to, to not like a food. Cool. Some people live to eat, or some people eat to live, and I live to eat. So, oh, there you go. You, know. you look like one of them guys like me that you can eat a whole hell of a lot, and wow, it just never piles it on. You know what? It, it must be your drum solos. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just my great, uh, great ability to have high metabolism. No, actually, being our guitar player can eat that pool table full of food and he'll get off stage and he's like, well, I'm hungry, man. I'm like, he's got the metabolism of a jackrabbit. It's insane. So you know how you guys have actually been dragged straight into the press area. Have you got opportunity to be able to see any more of the bands that are playing today? No, not, we haven't. And, and uh, basically just because we got here about an hour or two ago. So we, we just got showers and uh, we'll get a little bite to eat and then probably walk around and check it out. Sweet. So how do you guys feel about being the headliners now? Ace Freely's dropped out. Well, I feel bad for Ace. I hope his, his hand gets better. Uh, we were looking forward to watching him. And, yeah, so was a so, lot of people. Yeah, so, uh, but, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll try to, to uh, make everybody happy tonight and uh, rock out as the, as the headliner. So. There's a lot I, of people. I was going to say, I don't, I don't see that. There's a lot of Blackstone Cherry T-shirts awesome. out there. There's a lot of Southern Rock T-shirts flying tonight, so you guys are going to have one hell of a good time. So this is, this is going to be a great send-off going oh, back yeah. home. Yeah. Good deal. Yeah. Awesome. Well, th thank you guys very much. No. Appreciate it. Ab absolute pressure. So, anything you want to say to your fans as a, as a closing gambit? Yeah, thank you guys very much for supporting the band, uh, you know, coming to the shows. Uh, we'll be back in March. I know we have some dates. Um, just keep checking the Facebook, the website, and uh, we'll see you then. Thank you very much.